Welcome on the other side of uh, the Zoom. Um, I was together with my one of my best friends when I um, uh, told her I was going to do this talk uh, in 20 minutes in English about stress. And she said, why on earth do you want to do that? Because it will give you so much stress. And um, she reminded me that every time uh, during the last 25 years, my career, when I did a new project, I ended up sitting on her couch with a cold sore. And she said, do you even know the word cold sore in English? Now, in Dutch, it's cord slip. Uh, so that's from the stress. And uh, I'll hope tomorrow I won't end up sitting on her couch with a cold sore and it better be worth it. So I'm going to talk to you about um, the making process of my personal documentary, Stretch. And it was released last year and it, yes, it was very successful. Uh, but I wish drew, during the three year process of making this documentary, I had known that because I died so many times of not knowing, of having doubts, of having fears, of making failures. Um, I had a lot of stress. Now, every doc documentary is difficult to make because you film reality and you can't adjust reality to uh, your documentary. The documentary has to adjust to reality, which is continu continuously changing. And um, you have to stick to what you want to say and to the way you want to say it, in which style, while the reality is changing. So that's hard, but also the nice part of making documentaries. For me, it took my complete personal life to make this documentary. Uh, now I'm still together with my husband, with my lover, <laughs> but uh, we were very close to a breakdown and I have been extremely close to a financial disaster. And I was also very close. Maybe I also had it a little bit a burnout. So I'll tell you about some of the stresses. Um, and often when I finish a film, uh, and you put the credits at the end of the film, I al al almost uh, want to put a disclaimer on it uh, to explain this scene, ca scene came out that way because blah, 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 this and this and this happened. So you want to defend yourself because when this is the film, this is what happened in reality. So, but of course you can't. Once the film is out there, it's everybody's and everybody can say something about it. You can't defend it. But for me, it helps when I go to film festivals and I see nice films. It always helps me when the director explains what he or she has been dealing with and how hard it had been. So here's my story. Hopefully it helps you. Um, my son was nine years old when uh, we were told as parents that he had a talent for gymnastics. And together with his friend, he ended up uh, being invited for the national youth uh, talent uh, training. So it became a big thing. Uh, but when he started, we started with four hours training, six hours training, eight hours, and then 10 hours. And we ended up training every week, 15 hours a week. And for a 10 year old boy, that's quite a lot. So we as parents were struggling how to guide him through this and how to do this because it's a whole new world and i saw a lot of parents being very tight ass and fe becoming very competitive and th i thought that's stupid i don't want to do it that way but during these months slipping by i also got into this tunnel and became much more ambitious than i thought i would be and uh, for instance, I gave my son, when he was nine years old only, a protein shake. Now, how stupid is that? I can't, well, anyway, I did it because I saw other parents do it. And um, when I was at the schoolyard, I explained to other parents, he can quit whenever he wants. It's not that important. But in reality, it's not really true. Because uh, once you invested so much as a family and he as a child also invested a lot, in uh, not going to school parties, not going to play with his friends. So in the end, you do want him to win a medal or to be on that pedestal. So I was in the middle of this bigger phenomenon, let's say, uh, what you read in the newspapers and the magazines that 
We want our children to be good at school, to do sports, to play the piano, to be happy, to be beautiful. And maybe we're pushing them too much and you read this stuff and I knew I'm in the middle of this. So I need to make this documentary right now from my mother point of view. And so on a Tuesday morning, I sat down and in the kitchen and I wrote it with all this passion and fire within me. I wrote it down and uh, in two pages only. I applied for money and um, a year later I knew I could make the film. Now a year later is pretty relevant because uh, I had chosen my characters to be the main characters in my film. But during this year of waiting, I saw all my characters, my main characters, developing, adjusting to the situation and getting through the situation. And all those things that inspired me for making this film, they just slipped away without me being able to film it yet. And I saw beautiful scenes passing by without being able to film it yet. So that was a huge stress factor for me already before I even started to make the film. But you have to be patient and you have to have faith all the time that you can still make your film, even if it's in a slightly different way. Uh, uh, so you just have to adapt. Uh, another stress factor during filming, when I was filming, was that I wanted to follow several parents. I wanted to film the end, uh, to, to, to have in the film like three kids with their parents, but to end up with three kids, I have to invest in more children because one kid can fall from the wreck and then he's injured and then he's out or a kid can quit easily. So I invested like in five children, but five children have 10 parents altogether. So that's 15. And then there were three trainers. So I had 18 people to be close with. I needed to know the, 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 the state of mind, the emotional, uh, things that were happening, the psychology of 18 people during three years. So, um, and the reason you have to do that is because you have to be as a documentary maker in the right time, in the right place with the right people to film the scenes. You can't just be in the gym and when something happens, you whistle to get your crew to have it filmed. On the other hand, you can't just be in the gym with a crew and wait for something to happen. So you have to pre-feel for all your main characters what might happen at what time and you have to anticipate. So you have to be really close with all those people. But for me, for three years, to be that close to that many people was a constant state of alert a very high alertness and I couldn't get away from it because it was my personal life. Every day my son came home from the gym and he had stories like uh, Lasse is injured or Yannick hasn't been to the training a few weeks or a few days or Melle was sent to the dressing room and then immediately my director's heart and head jumped up and thought I should film this. Uh, should I film this? Is it, is it a true story? Because when it's one scene, it's nothing, but you need to have a whole story and a red line in a, in a film. So you need to think, should I film this? And you have to remind that you've got only 30 days to make your film. So you have to choose and you have to, uh, uh, to know whether it will be a longer line. So every day during those three years, I was in this constant state of alertness to know whether I should do something or not. And um, that almost gave me a burnout to be that long with so many people to be able to film a scene. Now only once I thought I really need a break. I, I need to get away from it, from the arena for only once. And I did it for three weeks. And then I immediately missed a story. So I would do never do that again. Um, and during this period, I thought uh, my next film will be about one dead poet. Because a poet doesn't uh, uh, change. It's you, you know exactly the who and the where and the when and the how, and you just film that. It will probably be a very boring film, but it would be so much easier. Now, this state of being alert all the time on all those people also had a financial effect. 
because as a film director you always need more jobs to get your income because no fund and that's logical no fund will pay you for three years to work on your documentary that's too much so um, but i had my main ear and eye on this film and on all those people so i couldn't i just wasn't able to do another job so my finances went down 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 and uh, that gave another form of stress and uh, the longer the filming took the lower my bank account got now um, i was of course as a parent uh, a character in my film in my own film and my son as well so i needed to film my son um, that's also why I got the broadcaster and the funds, because it was an inside story. I could tell the story from the inside, so it was very important. So, um, at one, when he was just nine years old, I, uh, uh, I took my camera. I had it right here in his room when he was lying in bed. And the light was nice and the atmosphere was nice. And we had a very nice chit chat and he was talking to me about maybe quitting the gym and I was talking to me uh, to him well I don't think you really should yet <laughs> uh, and it was a very nice scene and uh, I knew afterwards this is the style I want this is the way I want to do the film so uh, I wanted to go to his bed every time to do this again but as he grew older and as he got to the gym more often 15 hours a week uh, he became rebellious about it and um, he didn't give me those scenes anymore. So, um, and only now I can imagine why, because he went to school every morning and then after school he went straight to the gym, he trained for three hours, went straight back home, ate his dinner on the couch. We ate already as a family, so he alone on the couch eating his dinner, staring at the TV and then he needed to go to bed already because the next day was the same, five days a week. So, and then his mother came to his bed, this annoying mother who was trying to make a film about him, about him asking difficult and stupid questions. So he really resented that and he ended up putting his uh, blanket over his head so every time I came he put his blanket over his head and I just couldn't film in him, him anymore um, and I, I thought it was important to film him that much because when he came home laughing I wanted to film him because it's important to show that he likes what he's doing but when he come, came home crying I also wanted to film him because you want to know what's going on and how am I dealing with it as a parent that's the film but when he came home crying and I filmed him, I felt like a very, very bad mother that I didn't comfort him. And when he came home crying and I comforted him and I didn't film him, I felt like a very bad director. So I was always in this constant stress as well for these scenes. But I went to his bed and I did it like 20, 25 times. And um, I took my iPhone and started to film him and uh, thank god in the end he gave me scenes like this because um, uh, I, I, I think it b before because he he takes control over himself again i'll show you the the, the scene and uh, don't mind what i'm saying but just look at his face what he's giving to me Ineens denk ik, nu Roman die blessures heeft, kunnen we nu misschien zonder kleerscheur uitstappen. Het zou een easy way out zijn. Zonder gezichtsverlies. Zijn we tenminste geen losers. Yes, so I think it's very important that children, uh, when you have these, these imperative adults as I was... I think it's uh, important that children do this. They, they have these faces just to get their power back. Because what, what, what was my struggle during these scenes is that I thought 
am I the same parent as those parents who are working on their ambition through their kids doing their sports because they didn't get that high in their sports. So they are actually busy with their own ambi ambition through their kids. Now with these scenes in bed, these difficult scenes, I was thinking the same about myself. Am I pushing my child a little bit too much? Maybe because I have my own ambition to make this film. Am I this same stupid parent who's doing that? So that was an internal stress for me as well. Another stress factor was my husband. Uh, <laughs> Because often when my son got home, my husband also wanted to ask questions to him about his gym, about how he was feeling. And then I thought, well, I don't think you should ask him the question because my crew is not here and I might want to film it. And tomorrow my crew will be here. So it's better if I ask, ask the questions maybe tomorrow because then it can be filmed and otherwise the film, the, the, the scene or the situation is gone already. So let me do the talking tomorrow when my crew is here. And then, because I'm not sure about your role in the film and I know I will be in the film. So I was directing my husband in my private life, even without the camera. I was telling him exactly what to do and what to not do with my son. Now, he got really fed up with that. And um, the film was just everywhere in our house every day. And once we had a huge fight about it, this in the kitchen, and um, while screaming, or I was screaming, uh, I dared to tell him or to ask him, please get your iPhone and film this scene because this also might be important for the film. And uh, in, in the end, my, my husband was really, really fed up with me and with the film. So that was another kind of stress. And then my, because the filming took so long, my finances were really getting into trouble below zero. So I became dependent for the first time of my life on uh, my husband financially, which also gave another form of stress. I never wanted that, but that's how we ended. So another strain. Um, in the meantime, there was also a growing tension in the gym because I had my 18 characters and uh, the trainer didn't get along with one pupil and a parent got a fight with another parent and there was another parent who was very angry at the trainer and there was a parent saying very nasty things to other children in favor of his own child and there was this club who also got a fight with the trainer so there was a lot of tension in the gym so for me I had to walk on X not only to keep my relationship with my kid very fine but also with my husband and also with these 18 people in the gym, I needed to walk on eggs and be a diplomat. And only once I thought, oh, I, I should become a diplomat and earn more money because <laughs> that's what I can do probably. Uh, but that was a, a lot of stress. So, um, and, and what happens also if, if you film as a director, your people, and you stay so close to them, you start to love them. I really loved all my main characters because they give themselves to you and they're vulnerable. So, so as a director, I love them all. But as a mother, I was also in this situation and I had certain ideas about all these stresses in the gym and about these things going on. So that was another kind of stress, how to deal with that. And while juggling through all these matters and all these relationships, the broadcaster started to wonder, hey, it takes so long, this film. Where does this film, where are you? And my producer also started to have doubts in me and in the project because it took so long. And I was just like, oh, I just want to, I don't want to see it anymore. I just uh, look away from it. And I thought, is this really worth all the stress? No, it isn't. And would I do it again? No, I wouldn't. Uh, let's get it over with. That's what I thought, really thought. But after a certain time, uh, I had all the material I wanted and I needed, and I knew I can edit the time right now. 
So um, um, I took all my hours and hours and hours of material to the editing room and we needed to edit a film of 55 minutes. Uh, and it took us only three weeks altogether to see all the material only once. So we edited and we edited and we edited and we couldn't get it through. We couldn't see through how this film needed to be told. So that was very hard. And uh, I got a coach and this coach told me, uh, well, you just have to leave those scenes and swap those scenes and then it will work out. So that's what we did. I edited it and uh, I had a film. I had a nice film. I, I might even have a good film and it could be screened. But then I thought, is this the film I wanted to make on that Tuesday morning when I sat in the kitchen with all this fire and passion within me? Is this the same film? No, it wasn't. And um, I needed to sleep one night over it and I thought about it deeply and then I thought, no, I didn't die so many deaths for this version. So I'm going to open up the whole process again while my finances were here. Um, but I'm going to open it again and, and we'll try again. So I needed to tell my husband, it's not finished yet, we go through. And then I decided to leave the film for six months which is highly unusual. So I stepped away from it and I needed to step away from it to get away from all these emotions and all these contacts and all these things I knew about these people and all these sincere things. I needed like a painter to step away from it to see what, what the things were about. So I went away six months and when I came back, uh, we went again to the editing room and we edited and edited and then I got a new couch, coach and the commissioning editor from the broadcaster and they told me you need to get back to that Tuesday morning in your kitchen and you write down every feeling you've had ever since. You just write it down in pure honesty, even if it's painful, write it down. And that's what I did. And I rewrote those sentences to a film monologue or voiceover and I put it under the scenes and that's when my film came into shape. It came out of its form and it's always very, very magical when that happens. That's what I like about filmmaking. There's a certain moment in which all the puzzles uh, pop out or come together and, and, and my film came out of, out of it, into its shape, into its form. And this was the film I wanted. This was the film I wanted to make in the beginning. So, um, and the, f the funny thing is that uh, I don't even like films in which a voiceover tells you um, what a, a, the, the, the director or the filmmaker feels, what he or she feels. I don't even like that form of films. But for me and for this film, this what was what I needed to do. So, here it was. Ik hoop dat een ander kind een fout maakt. Dan eindigt mijn zoon Roman hoger. Ik vraag me af of de andere ouders hetzelfde denken. Sinds mijn zoon op hoog niveau turnt, ben ik in een draaikolk van trots, jaloezie en competitiedrang terechtgekomen. Yes. So, here I was, finally, three years later. <coughs> And uh, the film that was there and I had a preview with four people to test it and they were very enthusiastic. And then I had a premiere and I have a had a TV screening and journalists started to write about it. And a week later, all the other journalists from all the national newspapers and television were writing and talking about it. And I became trending topic on Twitter for two days. And I was nominated for two very important prizes. Uh, very fine for my ego. But what was, was much more important is that the Gymnastics Association 
took my film as a discussion piece and they uh, wanted to discuss about how to put more pedagogy into their child top sports training. And now that was very, very important. And then later on, they even organized a debate with all the other sports associations like football, volleyball, athletics, swimming. They came together to discuss my film and how they can put more pedagogy into their top sports programs for children. And uh, they signed a covenant as well. The Football Association, which is, which is the largest in the Netherlands, signed a covenant with the Gym Association that they hold each other on this, this uh, um, uh, promise that they are going to work on that. And then also a politician took my film and took it to the House of Representatives in The Hague to show it and to plea for a guarantee that we have to do, have a much more child-friendly top sports program in all the sports. Now this was a huge impact and uh, I was so thankful for it. Um, I had never known this. Uh, and then even on top of that, a few weeks ago only, uh, there was a trainer of the gym association and he had seen my film and it made him think about his own behavior as a trainer and he came out with his story that he mis he abused misbehaved while giving his pupils training and that was a huge coming out and that made other gymnastics and other athletes come out with their story that they had been abused or they felt very mistreated during their child's top sports career now, I couldn't have imagined that uh, ever that I would have so much impact and I'm so thankful for that. That's pure bliss for me. Now, again, the question, was it worth all my personal stress? Yes. And would I do it again? Yes, I would. So, I asked my husband, would you mind if I would make another documentary, a personal one again. And uh, he said, no, I don't, uh, I don't want you to do it uh, because it gave us so much stress. I, our marriage wouldn't survive. So uh, no, I don't want you to do it. And then I waited for a few days, a few weeks. And then in the end he said, okay, you can do it. You can do it again. Uh, because he knew film matters, film can matter. But then he said, uh, but at least now you know how to do it because you did it once and you had all your failures, you had all your doubts, you had all your, your fears and you paid your prices. So now at least you know how to make a documentary like this. So you should have less stress this time. We should have less stress this time. And I was thinking, hmm. I'm not sure. So um, I want to go to, uh, I want to quote somebody right now, and that's Alan Berliner. And Alan Berliner is a New York film, New York based filmmaker. He made a lot of personal documentaries and uh, he knows, and he said, every film is a mystery to solve. You will never learn how to make films. Get used to that. So. I didn't tell my husband this line yet. <laughs> I'm waiting for it. Uh, first, I'm going to start to make my new film and uh, I will probably walk on X again, be a diplomat again, and hopefully make my new film again. Now, getting back to uh, what my friend asked me, why on earth do you want to do this speech in English voluntarily about stress? And I think I did this because I re want to remind myself that I will have stress again and I will have cold sores again. But I know now at least that if you uh, stick to your vision and if you stick to your own voice and your own point of view and you make the thing you really want at heart, something you can give to the world, then yes, I think you can succeed. And yes, I think I'd, it will be worth it. And maybe 
that idea alone, that it will be worth it, can lower the stress a little bit.